Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. And today's video was actually inspired by a comment that I received on one of my past videos, like a video a day ago or something like that. And the comment said, I wish there would be more cozy games without farming because I'm not really a fan of it. And it made me think, I mean, that's kind of true. A lot of people, when they think of cozy games or like relaxing games, they think, okay, I got to start a farm, you know, what grandparent died that I have to inherit their farm. Uh, but that's not always the case. Actually, some of my favorite cozy games don't have farming at all. So in today's video, I prepared a 12 game list of games with no farming at all. There might be like a tiny bit. No, no, there's none. There's none. So uh, yeah, let me know what game you're interested in. Let's get started with the list. First up on the list is a game called Potion Permit. Now I have mentioned this game before and I will continue to mention it because it's actually one of my favorites on this entire list. Uh, so you basically play as your town's healer and it's up to you to, to heal the people of the town. So when they get sick, they'll appear in like your little hospital and it is up to you to diagnose what's wrong with them. And then what you do is you go into the open world, you collect and forage different ingredients, you defeat monsters and get more ingredients from them. Uh, and then you take those ingredients back to your house and craft potions. Now the potion crafting is pretty, uh, pretty unique because each ingredient uh, turns into a certain size block piece and you kind of have to put all these block pieces together to create the perfect shape which makes the potion. I know it sounds a little bit confusing but I really do love this game. No farming, just foraging. There is a nice story too which you're going to follow along, you know, curing patients and things like that. But there is a a story that you'll you'll find out through different character uh cutscenes and things like that. Uh speaking of characters, there are uh, a decent amount of characters in here. There is a relationship thing, uh a relationship tree that you can kind of increase. There's mini games, love the graphics. If you haven't checked out Potion Permit, you really should. It's good. Next up on the list is a game called Unpacking. You may have heard of this game. It's pretty popular. Uh, and in this game, you're basically unpacking boxes and putting things away. That's, that's pretty much, it's super relaxing. The music is amazing. I, the, I can't stress how great the soundtrack is. Uh, very, very good. The interesting thing about this is that the entire game plays out in a story. And when I first started this game, I, I thought I was just unpacking things and putting things away and just whatever, satisfying. It was satisfying, but I didn't realize there was actually a story to go along with it. I don't want to spoil too much, but it is definitely like a coming of age type story where you follow this female character and you kind of, you know, see where her life takes her. So uh, the first room that you unpack is your childhood bedroom. The next one is like your college dorm. The next one is like your first house, first apartment. Uh, and it's really cool to see the items that you unpack and the items that have stayed since you were a kid. Um, this game is is super cool. I, I wish there was another unpacking game or I wish there was another story that you could follow. This one is good. No farming in sight. I think you'll really like this one. The next game is a little bit of a hidden gem and that is part-time UFO. Now, if you haven't heard of this game, you really should because it was actually made by HAL Laboratories. And if that sounds familiar, they make all the Kirby games. They also help out Nintendo. They're an independent game developer, um, but they help out Nintendo with games like Smash Bros and things like that. But part-time UFO, it was actually a mobile game. You play as a UFO and you have a little crane that you can lower down, pick up items, and it's basically a really fun stacking sort of puzzle game. Has a ton of charm. Again, this developer knows what they're doing. Kirby is one of my favorites. Uh, and honestly, this game has become one of my favorites. It's only $7.99, which is, I think, the cheapest game on this entire list. It is really, really fun. It, it's one of those games where it's like, oh man, this is kind of dumb. And then you like end up playing it for five or six hours. Uh, it's really good. It's cheap. If you like these sort of funny party games, they don't take themselves seriously at all. Uh, it's really good. Um, there's also two player. You can play with someone like locally. 
Um, there's new um, different modes that they added for the console version and a bunch of achievements to go along with it. Cosmetic items to uh, customize your little UFO guy. Uh, Part-time UFO, music's great, graphics are great. I love this one, it's super addicting. Another game I think you guys will really like, uh, this game is called A Little to the Left, and this is a organizing puzzle game. Uh, this is a really satisfying game, especially for those people who like to, you know, organize things in their house or life or digitally in a video game. So A Little to the Left is $14.99. And yeah, you basically have these puzzles, you know, for example, you'll have um, a puzzle with all different length uh, pencils, for example. And it is up to you to kind of put them in order based on size or based on color to make like a rainbow or something. There's, I believe 70 plus puzzles. There's also a newer DLC that came out for this game. Uh, I think it's like a, a couple extra dollars that, that adds in like a, a drawer organization. Um, I could see a lot of people enjoying this one. This one, not so much for me, but if you're looking for, you know, a cozy game, a uh, little challenging puzzle game to just relax to, little to the left, it's pretty good. The next game, I could see why people might say, Pat, this isn't cozy at all, but Lemon Cake is a game that I would definitely recommend, especially if you like sort of the diner dash, fast paced sort of restaurant sim games. Uh, this is a really, really cute game. Love the graphics. Basically, you own a bakery, and when you start playing, uh, a ghost appears, and it's actually the former owner. So you take over this bakery, and you play between like three different screens. The first screen is your dining room area, where your customers will come in, order their you know pastries or whatever. The middle room is where you bake everything, and you prepare everything with different ingredients. And the last room is sort of a greenhouse. And I know what you're thinking, Pat, you said no farming. There isn't really farming. You basically water trees in the back of back of the room and they'll create like berries or something. Uh, this is a uh, really challenging game. It starts off very, you know, easy going and, and, you know, pretty, pretty charming. And it does stay charming, but it does get a little challenging and you have to really manage your time. Again, I love the look of this game. I Just the graphics alone are the reason why I even tried this game out. But Lemon Cake is a nice, you know, restaurant sim. Different recipes that you can get. You can upgrade your character. You can even decorate your uh, your in-game room, like bedroom. Uh, this game I, I had a lot of fun with. It is $29.99, which I think is definitely high for this game. But I have seen it as low as $14.99. And I think at that price, definitely go for it. But Lemon Cake's cute. Next up is the only Nintendo game, like made by Nintendo. I think this is one of my favorite games on the Switch. I'm gonna go as far as to say that, but new Pokemon Snap is amazing and it's cozy and it has ton of replay value. Even if you're not a Pokemon fan, I would still recommend this one. So if you don't know about this game, you basically take photos of Pokemon and at the end of each round, you will get judged on how good your photos are, how uh, nicely you centered the Pokemon in the picture, um, how much of the Pokemon you caught in the snapshot. Because basically the, the way these levels play out, you are in a car that doesn't stop moving and you can't control it at all. You can just control the camera. Uh, so you will have to, you know, take pictures of all the Pokemon that you see. There are different missions uh, to get certain Pokemon or Pokemon doing, you know, certain actions or whatever. Again, you might be saying like, I don't like Pokemon. I wouldn't enjoy this, but it is such a relaxing game. And man, the graphics, this is the best any Pokemon game has ever looked. This game is a full price. It's $59.99. However, during the holiday season, I am seeing this game $20 off if you get it physically. It won't be, you know, there won't be a sale price digital. Uh, but if you want a physical version, it's $20 off. New Pokemon Snap, can't recommend it enough. Next up is a game called Apico? Apico? I'm, I'm definitely saying that wrong. Uh, this is a very cute game that does something a little bit different. So this is basically a beekeeper simulator. Let that sink in. Uh, really quick, the, uh, the cool thing about this game is that part of the profits that they make from the game actually go to help bees in real life. So, you know, when you get this game, you can be like, hey, 
What did you do today? I donated money for bees. Uh, this game's really cozy. Love the uh, love the graphics. Love the music in this game. And basically, this is a more educational take on, I think, a cozy game. So you basically go around this world. You can breed bees. Uh, you can, you know, take care of their nests. You can harvest ingredients. You can craft things. There is a new DLC for this game that is PC only. And I haven't checked it out yet because it is like an underwater DLC where you can like explore underwater and stuff like that. Uh, hasn't come to the Switch yet, but will soon, right? I, I think that'll definitely happen. This game is $19.99, which I think is a little bit high. If it goes on sale, definitely pick this one up. It's super fun. Another game I absolutely love is House Flipper. This is $24.99 on the Switch, but does go on sale quite frequently. And as in the name, you take these rundown, abandoned, dirty, disgusting houses, and it is up to you to go in there and flip it and make it all nice. You know, decorate it with all the furniture, repaint it, redo the floors, uh, you know, break a couple walls, redo windows, clean it up, and sell it for money. And that's basically what you do. Now, there are some other like mission based type things. So, so someone might call you over uh, just to redo one room or there might be a house that is infested with bugs and trash and things and you have to go over there and clean it up and you know, just flip it and uh, make it good again. I love this game. I love it so much. I would actually prefer if you got the PC version. I think the PC version runs a little bit better, looks a little bit crisper. There's also DLC for this game, including a pets DLC and a garden DLC, but I can't talk about that because no farming in this video. House Flipper is worth every penny, especially if you get it on PC. But yeah, I love House Flipper. The next game is probably the most adorable game on the list, and that is Garden Story. Uh, you can get this for $19.99, and although it looks like a cozy game, and I do think it is a cozy game, like the music is great, it is an RPG. So think of like a Zelda type game, right? So there's puzzles, there's dungeons, there's enemies that you have to defeat, but you play as this little grape and he's so cute. And basically you go around the four corners of the world and you kind of, you know, solve their problems. I don't want to give too much away, but it basically plays out as an RPG game. Uh, it is pretty charming. There is a, there is a cool request system. So every day you'll get a couple requests from the villagers in that town. Uh, so it's like mindless sort of stuff, but it does have a little bit of a challenge. Some of the boss battles are a little tough, but I do recommend this game garden story. I have seen it on sale before again, super cute. And the music is great too. So definitely check this one out. This next game recently came out. I have not completed it, but I can recommend it so far as what I played. And that is Spirit Tea, which is actually on sale right now for $17.99, usually $19.99. And this game is very interesting. It has a very interesting premise, especially if you like Studio Ghibli. It like really gives me that sort of vibe. So you basically play as someone who is tasked with taking care of an abandoned bathhouse and your customers are spirits. Doesn't it sound like Studio Ghibli-esque? Now there is other things that you can do in this game. You can fish, you can talk to townspeople, you can shop around. There is relationships as well in this game. But yeah, you, uh, you kind of run a bathhouse and I thought that was very interesting. Now this game is very story based. So similar to Garden Story, it is sort of story focused rather than open ended um, like a game like Stardew or something like that. But I do love sort of going to work. That's the first time I've ever said that. But going to work and, you know, lighting the fire in the bathhouse, cleaning the towels, taking care of the customers putting them in sort of like the the bath and like, it's a very interesting game. I haven't seen anything like this. And again, um, the story progresses pretty nicely from what I've played. Um, I, I don't know. I just, I really like this game. I love the vibe of it. It kind of looks like Earthbound, um, at least to me anyway. But yeah, if you haven't checked out Spirity, it's one of the newer games on the Switch and I would definitely recommend it so far. Another newer game that I haven't put too much time into but I hear everyone talking so highly about this game. And this is Dave the Diver. 
uh, which you can get on the Switch for $19.99. Uh, if some of these prices are a little bit too high for you, just favorite these games and then, you know, check out your wish list after a few weeks or maybe a month or something. Holidays are coming up, so these games are definitely going to go on sale at some point. But Dave the Diver has an interesting game loop where you play as a diver and you catch fish and stuff with your harpoon. I know, very cozy, right? But you also work at a restaurant where you take your customers' orders, you pour drinks, you bring them, you know, food and stuff like that. And I love games that have sort of two games within one, you know, two different genres within one. Um, love the diving. I think the diving is like the most cozy, even though you're murdering fish, innocent little fish. But I love sort of going down there. The music while you're diving is really cool too. From what I've played, this is definitely a high quality game. It's actually up for a bunch of uh, nominees for the game awards this year. Uh, if you play Dave the Diver, let me know more about it down below. Literally, I just started this game, but I love it so far. And finally, a game that's actually not even out yet, but I wanted to put it on this list because it is coming out soon. Uh, and I have looked up some reviews uh, and some gameplay, especially on Steam, because it is out on Steam. And that is Pixel Cafe, which releases later this month on the Switch for $12.99. So it's a pretty good price. And this is kind of similar to the second half of Dave the, Dave the Diver, where you work at sort of like a cafe, restaurant, actually many different cafes. You pour drinks, you make orders for customers. I really like that sort of restaurant sim thing. But the other part of this game, similar to Dave the Diver, is it's kind of a, you know, a novel, like a visual novel, where it's kind of a coming of age. You, you play as this girl who... Um, it's kind of dealing with issues back home and you kind of, you know, keep jumping from job to job and you're kind of just figuring yourself out. And I, I really love the look of this game and I'm so excited to dive more into it. Let me know if you are excited for Pixel Cafe and it releases at $12.99, which I think is a pretty good price, at least to take a chance on. So there you go. Those are 12 games with no farming. They're still cozy and worth buying. I got you guys. Uh, again, let me know in the comment section, A, if you've played any of these games, and B, if you're looking forward to these games. Um, I want to stress this again, that any of these games that you're interested in, I would definitely favorite, you know, put them on your wish list and see if they do go on sale at any point. Also, we are around the holiday season. Um, I know I just dated this video, but we are around the holiday season, so definitely just, you know, Google some games. Physical versions of these games, if they have them, are often cheaper or you can get a good deal on them. So yeah, there you go. Let me know on my list and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks again.